What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about two trades that I made today on the 25th of February in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that did very well today and that I personally see potential in for the rest of this month and heading on into the month of March of 2019. So for everybody out there that's new to the channel, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to subscribe to this channel as well as hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video. And also feel free to join our free Discord group chat down below in the description as well as our free Facebook group. We're talking every single day there about trading, investing, stocks, news, strategies, and just networking with each other. I believe we have about 600 people nearly in that Discord chat. So join that guys 100% free. You'll get a ton of value from it, I promise. So let's talk about what ended up happening today in the overall stock market, starting off here with the SPX. Actually, before we even talk about that, for all you guys that didn't watch my previous video that I uploaded earlier today, go check out that video after this video because I talk about what actually ended up pushing up the stock market today and a bunch of Chinese stocks, which was Trump delaying the trade war deadline, which was originally March 1st. He's pushing it back because China and the U.S., they're coming to actual terms. They're coming to an actual agreement. They're is signs that there's actually going to be an agreement, which is actually what Trump said a couple of weeks ago. If there were signs that there was going to be an agreement, he was going to push the trade deadline back, which is exactly what ended up happening last night on Twitter. He pushed it back, which pumped a lot of stock optimism today or optimism into the stock market rather. And a lot of the stocks we talk about on this channel did very well today. So we're gonna get deeper into that again Take a look at that video earlier today if you want more news on that trade war update. And let's talk about what happened today in terms of the SPX. Well, the SPX guys closed the day up around $3.44 today, up around 0.12%. The Dow Jones up around $60 today at the close, up around 0.23%. And the NASDAQ up around $33 at the close, up around 0.46%. And for those of you guys that were paying attention to the markets today, you know that we opened up very strong and we ended up downtrending for the rest of the day. And we can see that here on the one day, one minute. We opened up strong. We gapped up in terms of the SPX here about 0.5%. At the highs, we were up around 0.8%, I believe, 0.75, 0.8%. And there at about 11.07 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we topped off at around 28.13 which happens to be right at that resistance that we've been talking about over these past couple of videos. And we ended up downtrending for the rest of the day, closing the day at about 27.96. And what is this telling me, guys? Well, this is telling me that we're trading in between the resistance at 28.15 and the resistance at around 27.90 that, again, we've been talking about over these past couple of weeks in these daily market update videos. So let me just quickly go over those, uh, you know, two points very quickly. Here on the 90-day, 30-minute chart, we can see it a bit clearer, right? We've been talking about this channel here, the resistance, which it's looking like we're topping off right now at the top of this channel, and the support here on the bottom. And we've also been talking about these resistances, right? The ones that I just talked about. So what it's looking like now, guys, well, we broke above this resistance resistance at around 2790 and we're trading in between this one as a new support and this previous resistance at 2815 which we actually just got rejected at right we can see rejection here earlier today we just saw it on the one day one minute we topped at about 2813 and now we're closing the day down around 2796 so we're pretty much trading in between this channel here horizontally right now in terms of this spx chart and we're also trading at the top of this resistance right here it's looking like we got rejected by the resistance on the top 
of this channel. So overall right now, guys, what I'm looking for for a further pullback to the downside in terms of the overall markets is for us to break this new support at around 27.90 in terms of the SPX and ultimately for us to start to head back down to the support uh, level of this channel which would put it at, you know, right around 2750 in my personal opinion. If we were to extend this a bit, if we were to pull back to the bottom, it would be around 2750 where we would expect for the support to bounce. And of course, if we didn't bounce there and we broke to the downside, that would be a huge, huge bearish move. But as of right now, guys, we got the first step in the rejection to the downside in terms of the, uh, you know, resistance at the top of this channel. Another step that we got rejected by that other resistance resistance from a couple months back at around 28.15. Now all we have to do is break the support, head to the bottom of this channel, and of course the 50 SMA, which would act as a support right around 27.60. If we broke that, we'd be heading to the bottom of this channel at around 27.50. So on a technical basis, guys, you know, it does look like we are due for a pullback in terms of the SPX, right? All in all, in 2019 alone, guys, we are up 20 percent yeah you heard me right 20 percent in the spx in literally less than two months so that's a 10 percent return in january and nearly a 10 percent return in february you can't look me in the eyes with a straight face and say that this is going to continue right we are willing we are going to see right a pullback soon very soon in my opinion in the SPX, we're going to see a healthy retracement, right? Like we saw back here from 2670 down to about 2620. We saw a healthy one, uh, you know, a couple of weeks back here from 2730 down to about 2685. And the fact that we've seen straight green push, guys, we've been trading literally on the resistance for the past couple of trading days of this channel, literally with minimal pullbacks. You know, the bigger pullback is going to come, in my opinion, in these next couple of days, whether it be this week that we're trading in right now or next week. I do think we're going to see a nice little correction in terms of the SPX. And of course, let me know what you guys think down below. And if if this optimism with the trade war news lasts, right, it lasts a couple more trading days, a couple more trading weeks, and we ultimately do come to a trade war agreement, you know, I don't know what the market's going to be doing, right? Is that going to push the market up even more in the short term here, potentially testing these all-time highs? You know, that could also happen as well, guys. So right now, we're kind of in an iffy situation where the markets are up 20%. We could potentially see a pullback, but we also have this optimism that the markets could continue to push up based on a potential trade war agreement to come in the next couple of weeks. So we're in a path right now where we can either go one direction or the other direction, kind of a path where we're splitting into two separate directions. And I don't know which way we're honestly going to go. Let me know down below. What do you guys personally think? I'm pushing more towards a little pullback here, um, you know, to the downside. But of course, you know, the trade war optimism that could pump a lot more green into the stock market over these next couple of days and weeks. Who knows, guys? So judging off here in the Dow Jones, guys, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we've been talking about this resistance as well at about 25,800 that we broke above last week. And we're trading in this channel, just like the SPX, from the two previous resistances back towards the end of November. And of course, in the beginning of November, from around 26,200 in the beginning of November, that's a resistance that we are at right now. And the one at the end of November, beginning of December, is at around 25,800. So we successfully held that old resistance as a new support last week and today. We popped up to the top of that channel and also to the top of the resistance at around $26,250. So on a technical basis right now, guys, just like the SPX, this indice, the Dow Jones, does look like it's pulling back. We see the resistance here, $26,200, and of course, at the top of this channel, like I did say, and on the 30-day, 90-minute, we can see it even better, right? It's almost like we perfectly got rejected 
at that resistance. So what am I going to be watching for, guys, over these next couple of days? Well, if the Dow Jones does break $26,200 in these next coming days, that is going to be the last resistance to the all-time highs that we saw back in the beginning of October at around $27,000, guys. So we're actually pretty close up to that all-time high right now, literally 2-3% off in terms of the Dow Jones. So if we do see some more optimism coming, we see a couple of more green days, guys. The Dow Jones is going to be at all-time highs again, which is absolutely insane. And if we're just judging off how much has come up in 2019 alone, we're up nearly 17% in terms of the Dow Jones. But on a technical basis, guys, again, I can't stress it enough. It does look like we are due for a little pullback here. <clears throat> You know, in terms of the Dow Jones, same exact thing with the SPX, the S&P 500. And judging off of the NASDAQ, guys, again, like we said today, up 0.5%, roughly the best indice out of the three main ones that we look at for the U.S. stock market. We are seeing some resistance at around 7,100 right now for the NASDAQ, which we've actually been talking about over the past couple of weeks. But a good thing here, guys, is that we finally pushed to that higher high from consolidating roughly at around 7050 to 7060 to 7070 over the past couple of trading days really from 2 slash 15 february 15th up to around the, the 21st of february we were huddling and, co and consolidating around this area the fact we pushed to a higher high that's just confirming that we're continuing the uptrend pattern here in the nasdaq but we do have resistance right here at 7150 guys and if we break that tomorrow the next spot we're going to be headed to is around 72.25, about 100 points higher than where we are right now. That's going to put us at the resistance from the beginning of November. Also close to the top of this uptrend channel that we've been trading in over these past couple of days in terms of the NASDAQ. So keep an eye on that level, guys. Super, super important. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of the overall stock market here. Again, more optimism could be coming due to this trade war news that we got, and especially if we do come to a trade agreement. But like I said in my video earlier on today, just, you know, if we come to an agreement with China, just because we did come to an agreement with them, that does not mean the stock market is going to fly up for the next one, two, three years. The global economy is still slowing down. And just because we are prob probably going to come to an agreement, that doesn't change the fact that the overall economy and the global economy is slowing down. And we could see some more downside, you know, in the next coming months. The trade war, the deal does not change any of that right so let's talk about you know what i ended up trading today for all you guys that have been watching the videos for the past week now i made a, we a, a video last sunday i believe or saturday or sunday talking about three stocks that i'm swing trading one of those was microsoft closed that position last week at about 109 110 dollars left some profit on the board there because we did fly higher no problem because i did take a 2% gain on that swing trade. Another one was J&J, &J, and another one was CAT, ticker symbol C-A-T. And CAT is one that I actually ended up closing out this morning. And let me show you guys where I ended up closing this one out on the longer term basis. And for those of you guys that didn't know what my plan was originally, well, my plan originally was to enter on the break of this resistance at around one, uh, 137.75. That's exactly where I ended up entering. I, we popped up. Remember that day that cat was up about 3-4%. That's the day that I actually ended up getting in on this big green candlestick here. Held it for a couple of days. We pulled back, tested that same area, and today we popped up all the way to my sell target price at around 142. My whole entire goal on this trade, guys, was to fill the gap from 138 up to 142. Did I get all of that? No, I did not get all of that because I got in roughly at 138 and I sold off this morning before the final 
final push. I ended up selling off literally right at market open, honestly, guys, within the first five, six minutes of market open because we were up nearly 1.52% from the close on Friday. So I wanted to just lock in my profits there of around 2, 2.5%. And of course, we saw the push up to the resistance at about 142, which was the goal sell price. But again, since I was already up to 2.5%, we were a bit overbought here because we gapped up pretty heavily. I just want to play it safe take my profits there on CAT, and that's exactly what I ended up doing. Ended up closing off this position today, guys. So this ended up being like a four-day swing trade, three, four-day swing trade. The Microsoft trade was about a two-day swing trade, and I'm actually still holding J&J, &J, which was another one that I was in from here at about 134.50, 135 on the break above this old resistance. So that's what, you know, quick little update on my J&J &J trade. I'm still holding that one. Cat, I ended up closing that one out, and of course, Microsoft, I closed that one out last week for those of you guys that have been paying attention to the channel. So another one that I ended up trading today, and I actually talked about this one in my in my morning video today. This morning's video was you guys ticker symbol UGAZ, and this is another ETF that I've been talking about over the past couple of videos. And guys, this one pretty much uptrended, you know, from about 12:45 p.m. all the way to about 2:45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And what I wanted to do in terms of my UGAS trade, and for those of you guys that don't know, UGAS trades based upon natural gas, I wanted to see natural gas fill the gap from about 270 up to about 290. And what do we see, guys, based off these technicals? Well, it's doing exactly that. And for those of you guys that watched my video earlier this week, I believe, no, it was actually over the weekend, or it might have been, yeah, what it was uh, Friday's video, Friday's video, I talked about this exact strategy in that video. I wanted for natural gas to break $2.72. That's exactly what we saw today with the gap up. I wanted it to hold 270, 272, 273 as a new support. Since it was an old resistance, we broke above it. It's now a new support. I wanted it to hold it as a new support and then slowly start to fill the gap back up to 290, which we clearly see it did that today. It's at $2.85. You know, at the close, it was up about 4% today. Ridiculous move. It did exactly what I ended up, you know, what I wanted it to do for me to trade the ETF, which is you guys. And that's exactly what I ended up trading today, guys. So based off the one day, one minute here, I actually did not end up taking a day trade for the first half of the day because I didn't really see any opportunities out there. The stock market was pushing down in general. So I didn't want to force anything. I wanted to wait and see if any opportunities were going to open up to me and we saw that opportunity here as natural gas really got out of that 277 278 range and started to climb into the 280 range and what this did for me guys is it opened up that opportunity for you guys right you guys at around 12 o'clock we can see exactly what i'm talking about here once natural gas broke into the 280 range this one went bananas right from 3350 up to around 3480 that's like a five percent move roughly three four percent percent move there in you guys and of course guys i day traded this one in and out very quickly for about a 1.2 percent profit i do believe 1.2 percent profit very quick scalp trade on you guys here guys so that's what i ended up doing in terms of my day trade today cat took my profits there about 2.3 percent i believe to be exact with you guys as well j and j still holding that particular stock here as a swing trade with a gold price to sell at around what was it like 140 i believe 140 ish 140 uh you know flat right around here on this previous support which is now obviously a new resistance so that is the trading update uh you know for today guys the overall market update now let's talk about very quickly what i see potential in for tomorrow very briefly so of course i do see potential in j and j to potentially add more money into this one don't want to spend too much time here well pretty much what i want to see 
is really the continuation of the uptrend to the upside and for it to hold 136-ish as a new support tomorrow and for us to continue to close the gap to the upside. Another one that I see potential in, guys, that I actually talked about this morning as well, didn't end up doing anything, was UWT, guys. We saw the big pullback in UWT from around 1630 all the way down to about 1450 It literally lost $2 per share in terms of this ETF. So this opened up a nice chunk of profit. And of course, if we see crude oil, which is the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The future that UWT trades based upon. If we see crude oil hold this old resistance as a new support, heading into tomorrow and slowly start to climb out of the $55 range and into the $56 range, this is going to be a very good sign that we're pushing back up in crude oil, opening up more margin for UWT for a potential day trade in tomorrow's session. So I'm watching UWT, guys, very closely. Let me go here to my active watch list. I do have some other stocks. I'm forgetting off the top of my head here. Um, another one that did very well that I'm actually still looking at is Square. That's what it was. Ticker symbol S. Q. So SQ right now, it ended up gapping up nearly 2% today. But what are we seeing? We're seeing resistance at around 77.50. So if we do break this resistance tomorrow, guys, just like we ended up filling this gap here from the support up to the resistance, if we break this resistance and hold it as a new support, we're going to start to see the gap fill. Oh my God, it keeps going in. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. If we slowly break above this resistance, like I said, and we hold it as a new support, we're going to see the gap fill back up to around $81. So tomorrow, guys, in Square, that's what I'm going to be watching for. And if we do successfully break that, right, this could be a nice two, three, four, five day swing trade in Square. Ticker symbol SQ. Let's see, MO, MO. This one's a bit overextended, but I still like how it's reversing. A little inverse head and shoulder pattern here to the upside. This one could end up being a pretty good play, but I would love to see a pullback down to about 50 50 maybe $51 flat to get in at a better price. And of course, we'll be riding it back up to $53, which is the previous support, which is now a new resistance so another one we saw sell off heavily today guys was cron ticker symbol c-r-o-n this one's not looking too good right now guys i would love to see a potential bounce on 20 dollars but if we do break that that's not going to be that good of a sign for cron another marijuana stock let's see how this one ended up doing today more selling in CGC, just like we talked about, guys, it struggled to get out of that resistance on the 50 SMA. Not really looking to trade this one until we break out of there to fill the gap back up to potentially $51. Until then, not looking to trade CGC. Let's see, what other ones are we talking about? Um, Microsoft ended up doing pretty well this morning, actually, guys. It got all the way to the top at about 112 this morning, people started to take their profits pretty heavily, I believe. Yup, right here. We popped up 112. We opened up, literally dropped 70 cents at the bell like that. That's people taking their profits, guys, because Microsoft has been on an absolute tear over these past couple of days. So honestly, this one could pull back. It's really screaming for a pullback right now. And if we get to the bottom of this channel at about 108, 109, that could be a good entry point for another swing in Microsoft. So obviously, guys, we saw some Chinese stocks today do very well. Alibaba ended up closing the day up nearly 4%. JD.com, I actually haven't checked this one since the morning. Let's see what this ended up closing at. About 1%, but we do see... It popped up nearly to $27.50, so it did drop about $1.25 from that peak pre-market hours. Another one I was watching, what was it, IQ? Is this IQ? Yeah, this is, wow, there's a lot of profit taking in this one, guys. Up to 30 bucks. popped up pretty heavily over the weekend. We sold off like crazy, down to about $26. That's nearly a $3 loss from the pre-market highs. Pretty, pretty interesting there. But overall, guys, you know, I'm watching a couple ETFs here, um, you know, the typical ones that we trade, and of course, the large caps that I mentioned. And if the markets do sell off tomorrow very strongly, like they potentially could, 
TVIX is going to be a very nice play, which is actually a good play, you know, heading off into the end of the day here, right? This one offered a great uptrend all day due to the markets, like we saw in the beginning of this video, opening up green and then slowly downtrending for the rest of the day. So let's say we do end up selling off in the markets tomorrow. TVIX is going to be a great play to continue to push up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are free and they're linked down below in the description box. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. As always, peace out.